It's Friday, February 2nd, 2024. Welcome to this edition of The Right Perspective. We've got a very special guest coming on at 9 o'clock, and uh, he of the first blood, formerly known as the Great Frank of Queens, will tell you all about it because we're going to bring him up right now. Hey, Frank. John, and good evening. This is The Right Perspective. I'm here, the first blood, along with John of Staten Island, and we're here tonight from 8 p.m., Nova Salutria time, broadcasting from Alamut, the compound, and the Rod Capola and Richard D. Henderson broadcast production facilities there in the metropolitan New York area. As John mentioned, we have a very special guest coming on at 9 o'clock, B.B. Farber, daughter of radio talk legend Barry Farber. We had on the two sons of Bob Grant a couple of months ago, and now we're having another talk legend's uh, child, B.B. Farber. That'll be at 9 o'clock, so uh, we'll reminisce with her. We'll talk about uh, talk radio and the changes since uh, her father retired from broadcasting, and formats have uh, all uh, sound all the same to me. So that'll be really, really interesting, and if you're a fan of talk radio and talk radio history, we think you'll really, really like this. What? Well, we've got our guest on the line when you're ready, Frank. Okay, so uh, well, our guest tonight, we're very honored to have the daughter of talk radio legend, Barry Farber, B-A-R-R-Y-F-A-R-B-E-R, Barry Farber, his daughter, B.B., and you will be Thank galvanized, so transmogrified when we talk to her, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Weaver. Well, what a wonderful introduction. I I can hear I can hear I can hear him laughing <laughs> through <Yeah>. your words. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. There you go. Wow. We we had on yes. a couple of months ago the, the two sons of uh, Bob Grant. So we're honored to have you. We're sorry your sister couldn't make it. So welcome BB Father daughter of a talk radio legend and pioneer, Barry Farber, to the right perspective, I'm here, the first blood. And I'm John from Staten Island, and uh, we were big uh, fans of your dad, and uh, of course we called him quite often, and we have all those phone calls on tape. You know, I remember remember your names. I remember (laughs) that you called in, and did, did you begin calling in during the WMCA days? Yes. Yes. Yeah that that was right. the that was the best. Oh, we used to have running battles with certain callers. Um, there was one guy that was a big supporter of Russia and everything. We'd call every night. And we'd uh, it was like a soap opera. So, oh, wow. so that was ongoing you know, for for a while there. You know, baby, I remember when your father, and that's when I first heard him, when he was on W O R, and he used yeah. to do an advertisement. The H. E. Harris Stamp Company, and the and the advertisement was so uh, enthralling, and uh, I had collected when I was, you know, a young kid, ten, eleven years old, and then in my twenties I heard, it and I started collecting. Thanks to your <laughs> father, I'm so interested with his commercial. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. I, he has left such. Uh, such an imprint on everybody that he met. You know, one of the things that I take with me of my father's legacy is he used to get in a taxi cab and without, he would ask the cab driver where they were from, even if they seemed to be American or Spanish or something pretty common, but he would always start a conversation. And for many years, uh, I guess a lot of, there were a lot of African immigrants moving here and he he would ask each one where they were from and wouldn't you know he w- he knew how to be a little bit conversant and say a few phrases in at least six different african languages <laughs> yeah yeah so you know he would talk he would he would speak to every waiter every person in a retail store every taxi driver in their language and i just saw people melt and i i can imagine taking up stamp collecting because of his it just imbued such such interest in everything 
really he, the world was precious everything from another culture was of interest to him and our culture he loved america as you know that's <laughs> now he said he was from gaffney south carolina <laughs> well that's funny you know cousin gurney is a is a fictional person right <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was a right. Remember Cousin Gurney? Yeah, and, Gurney and, 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 and yeah. Uncle Festus or something like that? Because was, was there somebody else, Cousin Gurney and Uncle Festus? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. Cousin Gurney, well, I remember. Was from, he was from Greensboro, North Carolina. Right, right, Greensboro. right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Barry, um, he was like one of the first people. Uh, I think he started in the late 1940s. Um, that's when the two-way talk radio thing started, where, you know, they took phone calls and people could hear people calling in. And, no, it and, didn't start then. Yeah, what well, did start with Barry Gray? Or it, yeah, but Maybe see, Barry it, Gray. It, yeah. It started with Long John Neville. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he said he and his uh, engineer, and that was in the uh, 60s, worked on two-way uh, you know, with the delay, they would have shows where they take calls, but they'd say what the caller was talking about. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, they had someone named Big Joe Rosenfeld Jr.'s Happy uh, Happiness Line, <laughs> where he'd come on someone with a st- sob story, and he asked people to send money, and then they found <laughs> out he he was keeping the money. But that's right. when it started. <laughs> I I know that my father didn't take calls in the beginning. He that that came much later in the seventies, I believe. He used to he used to interview guests, you know, and he he to, he he worked as a producer for Tex McCrary. Oh, and that's how he got his start in radio. When they gave him his own show, he was interviewing the way all hosts did back then. They they would they would interview uh, movie stars and. And and people who had interesting books out and things like that and the talk radio that you're referring to that you love and you're you're the sweet spot for you too that I think that came along in the late seventies in Barry's career taking calls. Yeah, I think did he start with taking the phone calls on WMCA? That may have been his first. Uh... Yeah, I think so. I don't think he did that on WOR. I think that was just no. straight interviewing. I guess. Okay. Yeah, because um, Barry used to um, like our phone calls, and um, I bet. <laughs> well, once uh, every now and then, if a guest didn't show up, he would uh, ask us to come down to the studio and do the show with him, which was an honor. You know, it was oh, a uh, one time he invited me down. I did the show. Terrific. Yeah. And, th- and then when he left WMCA, he went to some other station somewhere in New York, and he um, both Frank and I went down to the studio and did the show with him. I forget where that was. He was on WABC briefly. Right. Daytime. Was that it? it right. They no. tr- well, um, they tried to link him up with Lynn Samuels there. Yeah. And it didn't work Wait. out. That was in 1991 right. or 1990. And they had a big fight. And we have that, um, we have that cassette. We, we have, your father didn't lose it. His temper with her. No, she was like I a borderline to that psychotic. The other day, our mutual friend Tom Maza sent me that, and I listened to it, and I and I was, I was, I was sort of crying and laughing at the same time. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was yeah. unbelievable how she. John gave me uh, the cassette how that show. Yeah, and she I really played that on my Walkman was, on the subway, and I was, was sitting there good cracking yeah. up. That is one of the funniest things i've ever heard yeah. he never got angry with her and the more he kept his his calm the crazier she got right because she yeah. she couldn't deal with barry's intellect that's what was really bothering her she so she actually said i don't need facts i know how i feel yeah well that's typical of a liberal right they that's go what by, she said yeah. yeah yeah i remember once uh, Un- barry said oh we've been on the air for half an hour we haven't even discussed one topic babe he called her babe and she blew up Uh-oh. So, <laughs> so, and but tom's listening to the show he's going to call in in a few minutes 
Oh, so, oh, great. great yeah, so great. he's thanks to him. I've, I'm I'm up on the Lynn Samuel cassette you're referring to. It was <laughs> yeah, because I sent him a copy of that, so he might have sent one to you, but I. But yes. so and actually he came on the next day. They fired Lynn and yes. he had wow. to come on the next day and explain to all the people who liked Lynn Samuels what happened and everything. That was that was a tough job, you know, to uh, come on and try to have to explain away. But uh, Barry was only on WABC. They only kept him for a while. I don't know, maybe yeah. three or four months, six months or something like that. And then he went somewhere else because. Uh, but he could always find a job, the great Barry Farber. <clears throat> but, you know, he, he was on one time, he was on doing two different shows on two different stations, <laughs> I remember, on an FM station and an AM station. And he goes, I love the way he could, you know, with words, he goes, I have been on, an, on a workaholic binge. <laughs> You know, he really was a workaholic. I've I've never seen anything like it. He had several surgeries as he got older to to um, well to, to remove a recurring term tumor. It was not cancerous, but it was recurring, and and he he several times had to go under the knife to to get this thing cut back. And ultimately, they did a, a big operation on him. But he couldn't wait to get out of the hospital every time or what, whatever he had. Whatever he, he he got older like everybody, you know, he would fall, break something, be in the hospital. But he never wanted to stay as long as they wanted to keep him. And he would just start getting out of the bed. And I said, Daddy, you can't know. We well, haven't even the doctor. No, darling, I got a radio show to do tonight. <laughs> Let's go home. Let's right. go home. He he was almost like like a like a movie character walking out with tubes. Uh, Literally, he almost started pulling tubes out to to get. He just wanted me to take him home in a taxi in in the hospital gown. <laughs> he just wow. couldn't wait to work, and it was torture for him to miss it, doing his show. Well, yeah. I know he used to do shows uh, from his apartment. I believe it was the Apthorpe he lived in. That's right. Yeah, and you could hear the fire engines in the background. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he broadcast from home. Uh, it, it was on the, the talk radio network, T, uh, no, I'm sorry, C, CRN network. Oh, he, he, had a, he had a short live uh, television show on WOR Channel 9 in New York, and I remember yes. he had Abby Hoffman on, and Abby Hoffman yes. walked off. Barry asked him a question. I forget what it was. And uh, Hoffman, the, the drug dealer, got so intense, he walked off. And Barry's, gone. Barry's saying, now, now, Abby, where are you, where are you going? With? Yeah, he was very good at that. <laughs> well, Frank, um, Frank was good when he called uh, Barry. He, he, you know, Barry would get a kick out of Frank. And this is one example when... Um, Barry kind of chastised Frank for using, uh, Frank, we don't use the term colored people anymore. You're more sophisticated. And this, is, and this was Frank's answer. <laughs> While somebody as smart as you deliberately uses the word not black, which I use, not Negro, which I was taught to use when I grew up in the South, you use the word colored. This in, in matrimonial law is something called calculated to incense. I accuse you of knowing better, of choosing that phrase deliberately, and I want to know why on this night you use the power of radio to try to incense uh, tensions between black and white well, more than necessary. Well, at first, I don't think that using the term colored people is incense at all, because there is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. <laughs> now, that is they... a round one. You won that round. Okay, let's go on. You won that one. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! I'm I'm tearing up. You have all this this history at your fingertips. Thank you for preserving all the all these precious clips and little jokes he told, and and yeah, and even yeah. the laughter, the, his laugh. I heard that in the, in the previous hour. Yeah, yeah, he yeah he, he would uh, he would always do that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There you go. <laughs> now, did you? Do you I think you did, was it you or your sister 
briefly co-hosted a show with him, I think, correct? That, that mm, doesn't ring a bell. It wasn't me. It might have been my sister. She's a, a print journalist. Her name is Celia Farber, and she writes on, on Substack, Substack now. You can find her on Substack. I, I think they did, but, you know, was it was it on what, – what, tell me your memory of it. And, and was it in the 90s? I think so, and uh, she used the turn with him. Now, one of his favorite phrases now, turn the page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know, did they, did they host a show together on the Progressive Radio Network? That's Gary Knowles network mm -hmm. or, or maybe she was just a guest on his show I, I i don't i don't i don't recall the details of that um i lived in atlanta for two years in the 90s with uh, uh jerry farber who is um who is barry's brother oh he's a he's a, a crazy comedian and also I, I didn't live with him but i worked at his comedy club as a as a musician and and i he just called me now. He just—he's still alive. He's still working at 85 years old. He's still working on stage wow. at 85 years old. God bless. Barry, he's eight years younger than Barry, and uh, so it's—it's it's possible my sister and my father had had a show in New York, and and I I just wasn't here, didn't pick it up. It was before the internet. Yeah, Gar Gary Null, that was the big health guy, right? Yeah. 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 He, I think he had a show on WOR here in New York too. For a while. They know each other from radio. Yeah, Gary Null is a big fixture on WBAI. Oh, okay. He, he's still on WBAI. Um, um, but but I I know that Barry and Gary were good friends. It's, I have a good story about that. So Gary Null is a complete health freak, right? A real health guru, you know, sells supplements. He, he's he's a leader in the field really has been for years decades and 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 we were we were going to get get we were going to you know get Barry healthier and we wanted to send him to what you might call a you know a carrot juice farm or, or something and, and but but the best one in the world which is which is in in Mexico actually it's uh it's kind of illegal to to treat to treat people with cancer in the states with uh, alternative medicine, that the way that this the Gerson Clinic you might have you might know about the Gerson Clinic. Oh, Charlotte yeah. Gerson is the daughter of of I think Max Gerson, and and Gary got we were we my father and I we went to Gary Null's office, and Gary said I'm going to get you on the phone with Charlotte Gerson, and and you know I think you should go down to Mexico and just do a week of juice fasting to, to address some of these health issues and this recurring tumor. And, uh, you know, it's the most exclusive health clinic to, 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 with juicing cure cancer. And, and they have proven results and they're amazing. So he gets Charlotte Gerson on the phone, speaker phone and, <laughs> and, um, uh, and Barry is, is, you know, having none of it. My father like, liked his steak, liked his wine, you know, it just, just absolutely didn't want any part of this. And, and yeah. he goes, hmm, Mexico, hmm, I like Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we couldn't get him to drink a carrot juice for anything, really. It was, he was unbelievable how he just did, did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he led his life. I mean, I mean, r right up to his 90th birthday, he, he ate and drank whatever he wanted and broadcast. Yeah, when did he? What did he pass away at ninety two? One no, one day after his ninetieth. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I remember he did a, in, a in commercial. In Oh, I remember he did yeah, a commercial for sense. the Great Shanghai Chinese Restaurant, and I had a friend at that time who got so enthralled by the commercial, you know, with the seven cuisines of ancient China. So he says, Frank, let's go to the Great Shanghai. Well, we went. We went. We went to the one in. Uh, I think there was one in Chinatown, which was the wrong one, and the other one was up on <laughs> Broadway. But he could make anything. You know the way he could talk. 
you know, you wanted to try it or you wanted to buy it, yes. you wanted to listen to it. You know what it is, BB? They mm-hmm. don't have that anymore in talk radio. It's cookie cutter shows and it's doing the same topic over and over and over. Your father was extremely unique that whatever he talked about, he could make interesting. He's from the generation that gave us Joe Pine, Long John Neville, who spent his entire show telling people how he made a Waldorf salad. You you just don't (laughs) have that anymore. Yeah. No. (laughs) Isn't that interesting? We... We don't, and and we also don't have anybody who can speak to both sides elegantly. And you know, my father had plenty of liberals listening. I, I meet yes. them all the time, and he, and he he told me how John Lennon was a fan of his. And oh. I went, um, I recorded him telling me how, how how John Lennon how he met John Lennon, and it was at a, a party by thrown by Rick Sklar, who was a. a I think a station manager for WINS, which at the time was rock and roll, and right. and my father was invited because he was he was the the straight talk guy on the on the rock and roll station, and uh, be, you know because because uh, was it the FCC they they needed to have equal time, and he oh, right. met John Lennon at this party and they were all in a crowded room and John Lennon was there, and said to Yoko, this is Barry Farber, who we listen to every night. And I'm I'm not kidding. So my father, of course, was flattered, and, and my father didn't, you know, listen to the Beatles, but he knew who John Lennon was, and, and it was very funny. Well, they were both really honored to be in each other's presence, and, and I said, what did you and John Lennon have in common? Um, he said, I thought he was very intelligent. I thought he was he was, you know, not at all some some brainless pop star at all. Uh, really intelligent. He listened to the show. He he remembered all all the people I had on. He he wanted to more information about some recent guests. So he was very engaged, and my father was impressed with John Lennon as as a young lad who he thought would be just a a, a, a you know a rock star. And and I said, well, but what did you have in common, you know, ideologically? He said. Fighting communist dictators. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, I wish so Barry. Beautiful. I wish Barry had had a little bit more of an influence on him because John Lemmy was a big liberal. So, but I remember your father would always talk about how he wanted to visit Albania, right. and you know where yeah. the en- Enver Hoxha was. He'd always talk about it because nobody could get in. You know, and that was always so interesting. Yeah. He had this fixation uh, with yeah. Albania. Yeah, well, he always used to say this. Uh, I've got an Albania habit. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the... You should see him. You should have seen him run, you know, with doormen, be from Albania, handyman, cab drivers. He would go crazy. He, he, just, he, he just wouldn't leave him alone if he found an Albanian. <laughs> Yeah, well, he spoke about 13 languages or something like that. 26. Oh, wow, God. He, he studied I... all the time. All the time he was with his flashcards. Even during the commercials of his own show, he was probably studying languages. Yeah, well, you know. Vocabulary, he... he could grasp languages. It he... was unbelievable. He spoke two dialects of Chinese. Oh, Jesus. And... Well, he had the knack. He just had the talent for doing Arabic. that. You know? Well, yeah. Arabic. Wow, Jesus. He studied Arabic. He studied uh, some languages he didn't really go deeply into, like, but but he definitely all the standard ones and then and then some crazy ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he um, he used to carry a little notebook around in his pocket so that when he met interesting people. He would take uh, like little notes of what they said and everything. And in fact, he would, if something, someone was interesting enough, he would tell them who he is and he'd invite them on the show to, yeah. to do interviews. <laughs> and, you know, he wasn't one of these stuck up t- hosts who, you know, just try and stay above it all. He liked to meet people. It was a childlike fascination with everything. It, it was wonderful to behold and, and be around. Yeah, he's he was one of a kind. We use um, 
When we do uh, our breaks and things like that, we use um, Barry Farber liners like this. Guess who's on the line right now? Barry Farber himself. Barry, how are you? Thank you, and I'll tell you what an honor it is for me to be invited to honor... I claim the high ground here because I may have been the first of everybody who's spoken to see the birth of the broadcast. The right perspective. I saw a lot of others come, and most of them started out weak and gradually tapered off. After I heard... The right perspective. For a total of 65, 75 seconds, I knew that I had to move over in the saddle more than halfway. <laughs> Thank you. To be continued. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, it, it's sad you miss him when you hear his voice you know, but... uh, absolutely you know i i started a youtube channel for him uh oh yeah and i'm and i um other people are posting also but but i i have a, a nice little collection of digitized shows uh, so I, I take cassettes and i turn them into shows uh it's called barry barry farber radio oh wow YouTube the, the YouTube channel is called Barry Farber Radio. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, he was th- a there guest is another of Oz. person using the name Barry Farber. Hmm. Yeah, he was uh, so you he can was hear a guest his, of Oz when we interview. started out in yeah. 1998. Oh, the Alfred Hitchcock came on. show is up there. Yeah, go, go ahead, Frank. Uh, Frank was saying something. Go ahead. I'm sorry, baby. He, he was a guest. He came on the show uh, when we started out in 1998. He came on the show... Uh, I don't know, 2010 or so. You know, he wasn't, uh, I, I guess you could say, snobby. Right. He would, you know, he came on, we had, we did the show with him. You know, he, he very down to earth, and uh, we had really appreciated that. That's yeah, wonderful. Was... Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, we have uh, Tom from um Iowa on the line. I guess you probably would like to ask you probably a couple of questions, BB. Can you? Uh... Hi, Tom. There he is. Hey, hey Tom. Hey, BB. <laughs> you kind of stole hey. my thunder. I was going to bring up the point about your your dad meeting uh, John Lennon. Oh. oh. In <laughs> fact, I was listening to it today. Uh, for oh. the record, Rick Rick Sklar was the assistant program uh, director at WINS. Oh, that was that oh, was during the. Um, that was during that scandal with the, you know, the payola. Yeah, yeah. And that's when they decided to, I guess, go from the music end and then have what was called Open Mic with Barry Farber. I believe that's what the show was. I, I was reading some bio stuff. It could have been, I don't know. You can't always believe everything you read, but I think it sounded logical. Well, thank and, you. Uh, thank you for, for setting the record straight. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm not sitting. I yeah. can't believe everything you read on the internet. I guess um, you also brought up. Yeah. Although I never, I never called Barry. I listened. I enjoyed listening. I, I love the Farberisms, which I use many of them today. Like this show right now is turning my tired blood into sparkling burgundy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, you mentioned about you know the the infamous um, Barry and Lynn Samuels get the you know the odd couple. It was oh, thank a, you for that. That was John Minnelli's Frankenstein <laughs> Frankenstein experiment where he was going to pair them up. I, I would assume he was trying to like reinstate the fairness doctrine. He figured let's get a liberal and a conservative together, and of course you know Lynn wasn't buying into it and. Your dad was trying to be the, the the gentleman that he was, the consummate gentleman, and you know she just was not buying it. And then she walked out and got fired, yeah. and everything else that happened after that. It was kind of funny, but I know you heard it. I, I guess last week I had sent you oh, that. Oh, unbelievable! Uh, yeah, you too. It was hysterical. It was funny. I heard it live as it happened. It was one of the few times I didn't have a damn cassette in my recorder, and I was like, oh god, this would have been great. And I oh, never heard it played heard it again live afterwards. As it was airing, wow. Yeah, I was I was in my workshop running my printing press listening. <laughs> it was it was funny, but uh, you know the other thing your dad did was the the night before Christmas in Yiddish. Oh yes, 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 yes. And, and if anybody wants to hear that, they can hear that at Barry Farber Radio 
And I, I got YouTube I got my channel. copy. I downloaded it already. Oh, and and reading your dad's book, Molotov for Cocktail. Yes. Um, cocktail talking about Molotov. colored. Yeah, cocktail with yeah. Molotov or Molotov for Cocktail. Yeah. It, it the the title is Cocktails with Molotov. With Molotov, you'll, yeah, you'll, correct. Yeah. Okay. Because there's, he was at a, a cocktail chapter. party where Molotov was uh, in attendance. Right, who was a real man. He was a, uh, a Russian, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, he, he explains that in the book. Uh, the funny, one of the funny stories I read was called Colored Water. I won't go into it, but it, it, was, it was pretty funny. It was... No, you tell, tell the audience. It, it, it's really charming. Well, as a child growing up in, uh, where you had legal segregation, he had noticed uh, his mom uh, took him to some uh, department store and sat him down and said, now you wait here until I get back. And he's sitting mm-hmm. around. He's noticing that there's two fountains for people to drink water, and one of them said colored. And yeah. since there's predominantly a lot of white people there, um, Barry's just looking at what colored water. You know, like as a kid, you're saying, you know, <laughs> water is no color. It's usually white. It's clear. <laughs> and all these, you know, white people are going up to the fountain. Of course, nobody's going to the colored water. He's like, why wouldn't anybody want colored water? You know, it'd be interesting. <laughs> Until he finally yeah. saw a black man go over to the fountain. And to his surprise, the water was coming out clear. And it's just kind of, I guess as a kid, you know, you have different expectations. Like you're expecting to see colors of water, different <laughs> colored water coming out of the fountain. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, through a child's That's eye. beautiful. It is. It was great. You know, it was one of those little stories a lot of little anecdotes and stuff in there i'm not done reading it but i'm i'm finding it really interesting and enjoying it so yeah, I, I remember thank that you for story. the book i really appreciate that <laughs> oh, my pleasure and um i don't want to take a lot of time up but uh since you covered i just a lot of the farberisms though that kind of get me uh forgive me for talking while you're interrupting i, yeah, yeah. I kind of use that a lot <laughs> especially with yeah. friends sometimes with my wife um why use a stick of dynamite when bug spray will do the job? Yeah, hey, there is. Why yeah. use dynamite when insect powder uh, will do? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? Uh, I can tell by your tongue that your heart is up to no good. I can tell by your tongue that your heart's up to no good. <laughs> John, I love the way oh. you pull these out of the hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I love hearing this. Here's another or, one. Or have your secretary type it and I'll sign it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another or one. Do you ever find, you you ever find yourself on the side that. of the enemy because your side is such a schlemiel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you remember? Okay, here's the best one. When he interviewed um, Abby Hoffman, which is, I have that on my yeah. channel. That was priceless. Yeah. Um, yeah. At one point, Abby's complaining to him about the government having all these files and records on him and the FBI and you know, all this, uh, you know, they're all chasing after him. And, you know, he says, how would you like that? And and your dad says, I would rather have 26,000 pages about me in the FBI files than my name scribbled down on a piece of paper in the hands of a Gestapo officer or a member of the KGB looking for me in the night. I mean, that was just uh, yeah. so spot on. I mean, you know, and he was so, I guess, quick to... To yeah. say that, and, and, um, and Barry's like, he was like, he was astounded. He was like, oh. you know, or he said something to the effect like, oh, yeah, Russia has a better way of sharing their poverty, <laughs> <laughs> you know, than, than the United States shares its wealth or something to that effect. Right. Yes. And yes, yes, yes. that argument's going to hold up like an Alka-Seltzer over Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, here, this I won't one. say anymore because this guy could go on all night. And... Well, this was, this, was, this was another one. You destroyed my Air Force on the ground. <laughs> oh john one more favorite yeah what's that one uh you remind me of that baptist preacher in west virginia who was particularly grand eloquent one sunday morning yeah, yeah. when one of the choir boys noticed one of the piece pages fluttered down from the pulpit to the carpet and there was a notation penciled in that read argument unsubstantiated yell like hell <laughs> right, right, right. It's all written on the side of it. You can't, you can't substantiate the argument, so just scream. <laughs> yeah, that was another that, goodie. 
That was radio like you'll never get again. Yeah, right. Well, well you got too much sand in your gizzard. Clean it out and call me. <laughs> <laughs> One day, John, I, I got to get a whole bunch of yours. I'll link them with what I've got. I want to do a whole YouTube, uh, just a farberisms, yeah. like one oh, after the other. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, you had a lot of them. Oh, he yeah, had many. Yeah, yeah. I hit this the one you were talking about. This. Pardon me for talking while you're interrupting. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, and the, the the other one was. Uh, oh. Now I have to push my serenity button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> so that's it. I'm talked out. I don't, okay. don't want to oh, take any more so... time. I just wanted to get a <laughs> few jabs Tom. in. Yeah. Well, thanks. thanks for uh, for doing this interview. I mean, this is really. It's of good. Course. Thank, well, thank thanks, you so uh, much, and thank Tom, you for thank... all the audio that you're putting together. You're you're saving the the, the beautiful history of vintage radio. It's radio for history. Barry and others. Yeah. And thanks and for sending you that it. tape, Tom. Thanks for sending you that uh, uh, Lynn Samuels tape. Oh, yeah. So. Why well, can't they credit somebody else? Actually, put that up, and I, I just found it on. You know, I, I deal with about three or four other people that do the same thing I do. Mm -hmm. You know, putting all this uh, nostalgic New York radio, talk radio. So when I saw that, I said, ah, this is it. It's keeper. It was, and it was pretty good. The audio was pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. So, so but you guys, you know, I used to follow John and Frank. We didn't know each other. Now we, now we know each other. <laughs> uh, but prior to that, over the years, on, very, on other, you know, radio sta uh, stations or programs, and either they would be on before me or after me, but like it was kind of funny, you know, like and then all these years later we managed to, you know, get back together and, and now it's a little bit more than just, you know, I'm before you or you're after me. <laughs> it's fun. I, I enjoy it. This is this is what I do here in the Midwest, in the middle of the heartland here <laughs> on a Friday night when most people are out doing Good things and I'm I'm like I gotta listen to the radio. Yeah, in minus minus forty degree weather. <laughs> Not now. It's it's all it's warming up now. It's practically okay. no snow left on the ground. Okay. It's like a ninety nine <laughs> degrees change. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know Frank but, did uh, Frank did a whole show with Barry. As a matter of fact, um, on November eleventh, two thousand and eight, he had him. Uh, <clears throat> I got that whole show. So, it's, I got to send that to Frank. I don't know if he has it. So I no. think he did. It's a, yeah, Frank had um, uh, Barry had Frank down at the studio and did the did the whole show with. Really? Well. Wow. Yeah. So he was um, he was really good, and of course, you know, he he loved Frank. He hey, said, John, do you have that audio clip of Lynn Samuels uh, kind of saying what a good-looking guy you were and how she was? I says, you know, John, you could have played your cards right. You know, you could have got lucky with Lynn. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, as um, yeah, I think I, I, I think I do have that. Show, it was funny. It? You played yeah. it one night. We were talking. Oh uh, yeah, here it is. Well, John, my darling, I are you as cute as you were last week? <laughs> He's very good looking, Dave. You never met him. I did. He's really cute. Look, thank you. We're Just because you're Lynn. cute. Don't think that you're right about anything. <laughs> well, I want to say that it was a pleasure to meet you. Yes, it was really a pleasure to meet you. He really is. He's so nice. I liked him so much. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah, she was one of the few liberals you could tolerate. So. I had fun with her. Yeah, yeah. As long as it wasn't political, we had a good time. <laughs> My another, I don't know if you heard this barbarism. He he sometimes said, "I, I like liberals. We, we need to keep several of them around for yes. research purposes." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would say that. That's right. He said that about Lynn. Right. I think he, he said. I we, think that kind of set her off too. Yeah. <laughs> he said we have to keep them around so that we know not what what not to fall into anymore, or something <laughs> to that effect. So. <laughs> And that was, yeah, he was a one of a kind, and uh, you know we, we're gonna gonna miss him. You miss a, a we've lost a, a lot of great uh, talk show hosts in the last few years. You know, we lost Bob, we lost uh, 
your father. We lost uh, Rush. Um, there's a, a few more I can't remember. Of course, Barry Gray. I never listened to Barry Gray that much. He was annoying sometimes. <laughs> Bar- Barry Gray used to be the type, if he had a conservative on his show, he sounded conservative. If he had a liberal on his show, he's, all of a sudden he turned into a liberal. You know, I can't trust somebody like that. Am I on? Yeah, yeah. Am I on? <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, the, are, are, there, are there broadcasters that you do turn to these days in the podcast realm or, or any other space? Um, you mean as far as listening to them? Yes. Yeah, well, I think my favorite is uh, Mike Gallagher. I like him. I liked Rush when he was there. Um, there's very few that I make appointment uh, radio to. I, I There's some shows where we get some sound bites for the show that I listen to, but I find um, Mike Gallagher is a, probably the, the best that I like because he's very passionate. He's very emotional about what he feels. You know, he, he, he wears his feelings on his sleeves. But uh, and, and sounds you know, like Rush. A, a little bit. Uh, every that now, voice. And, every yeah. Every now and then, I'll tune into. Um, I might tune into uh, Mark Simone. You know, Mark is still good. I think. Yeah, he's, no? yeah, he's okay. Uh, Hannity once in a while, but you know he can be annoying too. Repeat. Let you not know. your heart be troubled. Yeah, that same old stuff. You know. <laughs> and I tune into Frank of Queens. To uh-huh. listen to uh-huh. because, you know he's. <laughs> I remember, I remember the the monikers. Is that what it's called? Frank and Queens, John from Staten Island. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I maybe I was around when when you did have him on your show, and and I knew about. I remember him saying, you know, these these calling guys got their own show now, and and uh, I, I, although I I can't say I have a clear memory of that, but I have a very vague memory of it. But I. I, I know he really honored your your commitment and and how you both of you kept calling and really kept uh, kept some sparks flying on a regular Maybe basis. They were all in, over in the dial. Era. Yeah. Well, he used to. You we could, used we used that um, uh, when he praised us a little bit for a liner on the show once in a while. Every talk show host who is honest will admit that John and Frank are great brass sections. Yep, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so we, we liked him, and uh, he liked us. So it was good. But you know that that kind of talk radio has kind of disappeared. Uh, everything exactly. is uh, fast moving. Um, you know, you, you don't really have time. Barry used to let you express your feelings. You know, he, he, Frank used to be on for fifteen or twenty minutes with him sometimes. I was too, and if we had a good battle going with a liberal because we were conservative, he'd let us go for a half an hour. Today, you know, everything is you got two minutes, you got one second, you got five seconds, you hurry Play up. Play that clip. Play you know, the clip, John. Um, yeah, I, well, let me just bring that up and I'll, I'll let. I know you have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll let, uh, I'll let BB hear, you know, what we have to go through today. Here it is. Uh, okay. Well, now, let me see. Yeah, here it is. Here's the, the talk show host rushing callers. This is all you get today, BB. Got to run. Hurry up. I'm out of time right now. Time is short. I keep it short, Frank. We have limited time. You have to hurry up. Quickly, we're running out of time. All right, you've only got about 40 yeah. seconds. Hey, hey, John, you got about 40 seconds. We got 30 seconds. All right, you have to hurry. One minute. <laughs> very quickly, a, a minute. Fast. Linda on Long Island, very quickly. Okay, Mark. fast. We just have a minute left. We've only got about a minute. Mark in Pennsylvania, less than 30 seconds. Mark, go. Got to take a quick break. And, and yeah, I'm going to let you go here, but i got to let you go. Cause let I'm going to get some other calls. Thank you. Our time's up. John, 30 right, seconds, quick. Hurry up, and hurry up. I, I just have to tell you, we've only got about a half a minute. Sure. Hurry up, dear. Karen, Dobbs Ferry, New York. Real quick, Karen. Okay, i got 30 seconds, so get right to it. Frank, you don't have all that much time. John, you really don't have nearly as much time as you wish you did. Hurry up, i got to take a break. Uh, Let me answer your question in a short time. Hurry up. Uh, John, I don't have enough time. (laughs) All right, John, we don't have much time. You better hurry up. I don't have a lot of time. you got five seconds. (laughs) I like that last one. you got five seconds. (laughs) Well, thanks a lot. (laughs) I only waited two hours.
That's what you get today when you call talk radio. That's not good. That's not as much fun. Not like it used yeah. to be. No, no. You know, right. they do out here, I don't know, John, if, if, if they've got it by you, 30-second talkbacks, like you have an iHeart <laughs> app for your phone, and you record, like if they're talking about a subject, they'll take these 30 seconds, and you have exactly 30 seconds. If you go over to 30 seconds, you won't hear it. And then if it sounds good, you send it to them, and then they'll listen to it and make sure you didn't drop any F-bombs or do anything stupid, and they'll yeah. play it. And I'm saying, this is how you react? Yeah. Well, what they do I mean, is uh, a, lot of the, a lot of them have on their website, they have a talkback button. So you can use that to leave a message, and sometimes right. they'll, read, they'll read your message or play it on the air. Yes. 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 Yes, exactly. So that's what they do. I despise do. that. <laughs> Yeah, but they won't. They won't engage and and have and have a real dialogue that that can that can be enough to to explore a subject. But you have to sell forty commercials every hour. <laughs> well, the worst is when you um, when you've waited an hour on the line, and Frank has gone through this as well. So that's why we got oh, yeah. our own show and studio. That you wait online, and then the the um, call screener comes on. And says, uh, uh, Frank, listen, we're changing subjects right now, but thanks for calling. Boom, and they hang up. Go, thanks a lot. You know, he, <laughs> that's how you treat your callers and people who are loyal to the show. We're, cha- yeah. we're changing the subject, so goodbye, and uh, thanks for waiting for two hours. A three-hour talk show is nothing more to me now. and It's sad yeah. than a, than a three-hour infomercial with maybe an hour and ten minutes of actual content. And I hate it. It's the rest of it is just these stupid commercials. And it's like they don't care about the callers. They, they just want to jam in as many commercials, you know, sell the ad time. Maybe they're selling the time cheaper. And they're just, you know, doing it with more commercials. But it's unfair to the caller, definitely unfair to the listener, more unfair to the host. Because the host can't even do his job. And... You know, I, I think some people could really just short their careers or you just tell him you're insignificant as a host. You really don't mean anything. Yeah. We just want to sell mm. commercial time. And you're yeah. Baby, I want to ask show. you, do you ever think of getting into radio? No, I'm <laughs> you're all much more much more uh, smooth, articulate and 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 engaging than I am. I I play music and I I'm I'm a songwriter. And I perform my own songs. I also perform for a living in, in elder care facilities, assisted livings, nursing homes. And I really love doing that. Don't have the gift of gab, but but my father turned me on to the, the beauty of communicating with people. Huh. You make up for it in the music. Well, are, you <laughs> you know? sure, are you sure this isn't Taylor Swift? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Well, we want to say thanks for, to, uh, you know, uh, taking your Maybe. time. I know you're very busy there. And your, your sister. Thank you so sit, much. Next time, maybe we'll have your sister, Celia. She can make it as well. I'm sure she's. Yeah, okay, like, yes. So she's, she's overseas. That's why, that's why it didn't work out this time. She's yeah. in Spain with Jeremy, who is her son, and Barry's grandson. And Jeremy started studying Spanish with Barry ah. when he was five years old. Or no, no, eight, five. I think he was more like maybe eight years old, and he really was into learning Spanish. And now he is fluent, and and married a beautiful Spanish woman two years ago. He'll be he'll be thirty years old in May, and he uh, and Barry would be over the moon to know that Jeremy is completely wow. fluent and living in another country and loving it. Yeah, well, we should send you a copy of this interview so he can listen to it. And yes, hear- well, yes. Here are so all that, the great. That's great. I, I know. I know. My sister and nephew Jeremy would love that. Thank you. <laughs> and um, is she over there permanently, or is it uh, temporary? She's, she's over there for for a lengthy visit, but definitely not permanently. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And in the words of Barry Farber. May your tribe increase. <laughs> oh, I love that one. I love that one. I'm so happy to hear you say that. Isn't that the nicest thing to say? <laughs> he would say that when somebody 
when he just believed in what somebody was doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. May your tribe increase. Thank you, gentlemen. And oh. to be continued. Yeah, right, right. That's right. right. Or even, we hope so. Or he'd say, uh, uh, give them a blue ribbon around their box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> That was another one of his favorites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for honoring Barry's legacy and and keeping his voice alive and and doing it with such a sense of humor and and just it's beautiful, beautiful the way you you bring him back. Thank you, gentlemen. All You're welcome, Tom, Frank, John. <laughs> Thanks for a, a great interview. We yeah. speak with you tonight. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's beautiful. I'll upload okay, more things okay. too now that it, now that I know you're you're all listening. I'll upload more video uh, video uh, <laughs> versions of Barry's radio shows, and I'll and I'll definitely send them to Tom, and he'll send them to you. Okay, sounds Thank great. You, BB. All the best. Thank yeah. you. All the best. Good all night. right. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank <laughs> you. Good night. Bye now. Good night. <laughs> that was fun. That was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she sounds as nice as her father was. Yeah. <laughs> the apple didn't fall far from the tree. No. That Although she's me. not a talk host, but she's a very talented musician oh, and a wow. singer. Oh, wow, that's nice. Yeah. So there's you talent, know, there's, there's a, talent a, pool there. Barry Farber, they got this uh, uh, Jewish family when he was in South Carolina, and he always used to say Gaffney, South Carolina. Right. And uh, he, they brought them over, and, you know, everybody was treating them so nicely, but I don't know exactly what happened, but he did something. And the family that they brought him over, the father says to Barry, you are worse than Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I, I don't know what it was. <laughs> and I wish I had remembered the whole story. It was a great story. <laughs> so they did the and same. Said it to Barry. Imagine that. Yeah, he did it. Said it to Barry. <laughs> Imagine oh, that saying man. that to a Jew. <laughs> he got him <laughs> out of there, and he did something, and uh, he said that to him. <laughs> and one time, the mic was open, so you know when they go to the commercial you couldn't hear what was going on in the studio but it was open and i heard so i was on the line and uh i, I had to you know was interrupted by the commercial and barry goes uh he is a chronic caller <laughs> so i never thought he thought that he so he goes he is a chronic caller <laughs> uh he he likes mussolini so the guest, who was the president of Adelphi University in uh, Long Island, I, he like really he, he knocked he knocked Barry out. Cause he goes, "Well, a, a case can be made for that." And, he, and Barry goes, "What? You couldn't believe it!" <laughs> and, you know, and the president of Adelphi University went. Down the line, and said, "Yeah, the guy wasn't basically that bad. He did a lot." So that was great. That tape, I wish I had. That is the one tape that I wish I had. 